In this video, we will talk about Newton's second law for rotation. This involves two important concepts that we have already seen. The first is the torque. The second is the angular acceleration. We shall explain how these two concepts neatly combine to make up Newton's second law for rotation. Now, the connecting factor is, of course, a third concept which we also have already seen, the moment of inertia. Finally, we will solve a few problems to illustrate the concepts presented. Let's look at the following system. You have a disk that is being acted upon by a force F at this point. The position vector of the point on which the force is acting is R, in that direction shown. The combination of this force in that direction and the position vector in that direction will produce a torque in the direction that is coming out of the board that will cause the disk to rotate in a counterclockwise manner. We also know that since the spinning is in a counterclockwise direction, the angular velocity of this disk is also coming out of the board. The application of this force at the rim of the disk will cause the disk to spin faster and faster. That means omega will increase with respect to time. Now what that means is since the time rate of change of angular velocity is positive or angular velocity is increasing with respect to time, that implies angular acceleration also in the same direction as the direction of angular velocity. Namely, there will be an angular acceleration for this disk in the direction coming out of the plane. So what we have here is an application of a force in that manner causes torque that is coming out of the board and that torque causes the angular velocity to change, namely to increase with respect to time, which in turn causes an angular acceleration which is also coming out of the plane. These two vectors are proportional to each other, that is, when you increase the amount of torque that is acting on this disk, the angular acceleration of this disk will also increase. The linear relationship between these two vectors, namely the torque and the angular acceleration, is given by this equation, where the constant of proportionality is the moment of inertia of this disk. In order to understand that I is indeed the moment of inertia of the system, let's look at the following simple system. So you have a point mass moving in a counterclockwise manner along a circular trajectory with radius r, and this mass is being acted upon by a force f in a tangential direction, so as to make it to spin counterclockwise. The existence of this tangential force will also create a tangential acceleration that way for that mass according to Newton's second law that we have seen some time ago. Now the torque that is acting on this mass m due to that force f is given by r times f times the sine of the angle between that position vector and that force F, which is 90 degrees, which simply will give you R times F. However, since the force is M times the tangential acceleration, we can write the torque quite simply as R times M times AT, which is the tangential acceleration of the mass. We also know that tangential acceleration is related to angular acceleration in a following manner. By substituting this equation in here, 
we end up with the following expression for the torque acting on this point mass system. So as you can see, the torque vector is proportional to the angular acceleration vector with mr squared being the constant of proportionality of this equation. Now what is mr squared for such a system? It is quite simply the moment of inertia of this point mass about this rotation axis that's coming out of the plane. So that means this equation right here is quite simply the equation that we have written down a few minutes ago for the disk system. One can also see the resemblance between this equation and that equation, which is Newton's second law for linear motion. So this equation right here defines Newton's second law for rotation. Now let's see what happens if you have the same disk system it's now being acted upon by two forces, F1 and F2. Obviously, F1 will produce torque tau1 and F2 will produce torque tau2. They will combine to produce a net torque and that net torque will produce this angular acceleration that will tend to rotate the disk system in a clockwise direction. Let's compute the expression for torque 1. Torque 1 is produced by force F1. Its position vector is heading leftward. As you curl your right hand fingers from R to F1, your direction of your right hand thumb is pointing out of the plane. So that is the direction of torque tau 1. The magnitude of that torque is simply R times F1. The torque produced by F2, so that is the position vector, and as you curl with your right hand fingers from R to F2, you can see that your right hand thumb is going into the board, and the magnitude of that torque 2 is given by R times F2, where now the sign is minus whereas the sign for torque 1 is positive. So the net torque here is given by tau 1 plus tau 2, which is just a vector sum, which will in turn give us R times F1 minus F2, taking the positive and the negative sign into account. Because the direction of the angular acceleration is into the board, the direction of the net torque should also go into the board. Thus, when you have a system that's being acted upon by more than one torque, the angular acceleration is controlled by net torque. And this is the essence of Newton's second law for rotation. And now one can see clearer the resemblance between the rotational case and the linear case. Let's look at the following simple problem. A cable is wrapped around a uniform solid cylinder. So this is a cross-sectional view of a uniform solid cylinder. Radius is 10 centimeters. Mass is 55 kg. The cylinder is pivoted so that it can rotate about its axis. So the axis is right there coming out of the board. If the cable is pulled with a constant force of 10 newtons rotating the wheel in the process as shown by this arrow, find the torque and the angular acceleration of the cylinder as it is turning. The torque is quite simple. The cylinder is turning like that. So we know the force is 10 newtons. It's acting in that direction. The position vector of that force is going up like that. So that is the vector r, or the position vector. This is the force vector. So the torque is given the magnitude of the torque since the angle between the two vectors is 90 degrees is simply given by 10 times the position vector which is 10 centimeters so converted into meters 0 0.1 meter the angle between them is 90 so sine 90 is which is 1 and therefore the torque is 1 newton meter to find the angular acceleration, we can rely on 
Newton's second law for rotation. We know what the torque is. It's 1. The moment of inertia, since this is a, a uniform solid cylinder, it's given by half times the mass, which is 55 kg, times the square of the radius. So the radius is 10 centimeters. Converted into meters, 0 0.1 squared times alpha, which is what we want to determine. So the angular acceleration alpha will turn out to be 3.64 radiant per second squared. And that solves the problem. Problem two. Figure below shows a pulley. So that's the pulley in the form of a 3 kg uniform disc with a radius 15 centimeters. That's the radius of this, of this pulley mounted on a fixed axle. A mass 1.3 kg hangs from a massless string which wraps around the pulley. So that is the string right there. Calculate the tension in the string and the acceleration of the mass as it is falling. So let's sketch the free body diagrams. For this system, well, there are two free body diagrams. One is for the pulley and the other one is for the falling object. So let's do the falling object first. There are two forces. The first force is the weight, 1.3 times gravity. And the second force is the tension that is pulling it upward. It is falling, so the acceleration is downward. The Newton's second law gives the following equation for this free body diagram. It is 1.3 times gravity minus tension equals the mass, which is 1.3 times A. So that is the first equation for the, from the first free body diagram. The second diagram is for the pulley. So you have torque being applied because the pulley is turning like that. There is a torque here due to this tension on the string that is causing the pulley to rotate with an angular acceleration of alpha. And of course you have the weight of the pulley which is going down. The weight is three times gravity. But because there is, the pulley is hinged, there is a normal force that is heading upward. So the combination of this normal force and the weight 3g produce no rotation about this axis. So in the equation that follows, these two forces will not show up. Newton's second law for rotation give you the torque due to that tension which is tension times the radius of the pulley because the radius of the pulley is indeed the position vector of that tension force that's heading downward and as you can see the angle between the tension and the position vector is 90 degrees so sine 90 is 1, so it, the torque is quite simply the product of tension times the radius of the pulley. And that equals to I, which is moment of inertia of the pulley, times the angular acceleration. Since this is a uniform disk, the moment of inertia for such a uniform disk is given by half times the mass times the square of the radius. So the right-hand side, I times alpha will simply become that. We also know that alpha is the tangential acceleration, which is the same as the acceleration of that falling object, over the radius of that pulley. So substituting this in here, we obtain the following equation. The r will get cancelled in the following manner, leaving an equation for the tension as half times m times a. And since this mass is 3 kg, we get a second equation that we can use to solve for the two required unknowns. Substituting T inside this equation will enable you to solve for A through the following equation. Solving that, you'll get the following value for A, which is 4.55 meter per second squared. Substituting that in here will give you the tension of 6.82 newtons.
and that solves the problem.